Oh golly geez, as much as I love Persona games, even I've never played the immensely popular Persona 3 Portable. I mean, I have played Persona 3 FES on the PS2, but even though the graphics are considerably downgraded on the PSP, P3P seems to be the ultimate version of this adventure that everyone's ranting and raving about, at least as far as gameplay is concerned anyway. There's tons of reasons why people say this, but what's possibly the coolest thing about P3P is that the game lets you play as a female protagonist, most commonly known by English-speaking fans as Minako Arisato. Personally, this is the path I'm gonna take, seeing as I already played the game as the guy before. But there being so few men in the game, I really don't know who I'm gonna set good old Minako up with, so I think I should probably do a little bit of research and weigh my options. Well, right off the bat, the game doesn't let you date Korochan, seeing as how this was developed by reasonable human beings who'd never do anything so ridiculously stupid like let you date a dog, so... Looks like we're gonna have to narrow things down between Junpei, Akihiko, and Ken, who's 10 years old. I'm gonna get in a lot of trouble for making this video, aren't I? It doesn't help that I'm wearing a shirt with this friggin' guy on it. That's right, the original Persona 3 Portable lets you date a friggin' 10-year-old boy as the 17-ish-year-old female protagonist, and somehow I never knew this was a thing until over a decade after the fact. Obviously, this is weird as hell, but I feel like I should make it clear that the point of this video isn't to pretend like I'm furious and try to get Atlas taken down or anything like that. Uh, don't get me wrong, this is totally frig, but I'm really just trying to see exactly how bad it actually is, and most importantly, figure out how this ever even happened in the first place. I mean, not only did the developers think, yeah, sure, this sounds like a good idea, but the higher-ups either didn't notice or just flat-out didn't care. Maybe they thought it appealed to all those 10-year-old boys playing this M-rated game, I suppose. Hell, at this point, they might as well have made Koromaru an option. I'm kidding! Although, <laughs> after a couple drinks, Korochan is kind of looking like a snack. Oh, come on, I didn't even do anything! I was just making a joke! Oh, yeah, dirtbag? Then why do we find peanut butter in your possession? Um, I was gonna make a good old-fashioned fluffernutter, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's a lot of dialogue in these games, so it'd be real easy for the higher-ups to just kind of overlook this romance option. But even so, there were a lot of people who worked on this game, and I really wish I could have been a fly on the wall for those internal conversations about this particular social link. Like, yeah, so how about we let the female protagonist f*** shit-ass cunt sh right in the b hole with the 10-year-old child, Ken? I mean, was everybody else just kind of like, yeah, sounds like a great idea? I mean, did even one person speak up and say nay? All opposed? Nay. Who keeps saying that? It was him. Let's get him, Philly. <laughs> Also, what was it like for the English dubbers when they were given the script? I'll bet they didn't actually read every line of dialogue before agreeing to do the voiceovers in the first place, and then they realized the pickle they were in at like 2 a.m. on a Friday, and everybody just kind of wanted to get it over with and go home for the weekend. I mean, either that or the crew was just kind of like... Nice. Like, yeah, I know that Persona 5 already lets you date your teacher, and that's also pretty weird, but... Eh, I don't know. It's not nearly as outrageous as Ken, because if you really think about it, the teacher is forming a relationship with someone whose every move is being controlled by an adult, i.e. you, and if you're playing an M-rated game, then presumably you're an adult. To be fair, though, there are some cultural differences between most English-speaking countries, and Jesus Christ, the age of consent in Japan's 13? Well, never mind trying to make sense of the teacher situation, but even as frigged as 13 is, Ken is still considerably younger than that, so it's not like we could just write this off as cultural differences anyway, which begs the question of just how this idea got through so many channels and was still given the green light. But you know what? In the interest of fairness, let's not leave any stones unturned with this matter and actually examine the context of what's going on here. I mean, who knows? Maybe the story isn't in any way suggestive, and the two characters are merely just close platonic friends and comrades, kind of like a brother and sister type of a deal. So before we pass judgment, I think we should take a look at the actual dialogue in the social link between Ken and the female protagonist on the so-called romance route. I mean, what could possibly go wrong, am I right? Well, right off the bat, you can't even pursue Ken unless you have enough courage due to his, and I quote, reluctance. Because, you know, all those diddlers with the candy schemes and what have you are actually really courageous people, if you think about it. So, yeah, Monaco pursuing a reluctant Ken isn't really a great start, if I'm being honest, but maybe we'll learn that she really just wants to mentor him if we dig a little deeper. The guys at the dorm are older than me, and you have lots of friends, right? 
That's right, Ken. Very good logic. It looks like we're off to a pretty innocent start here. Maybe this whole thing was blown out of proportion. I mean, I'm sure the best option is going to be the one that agrees with this statement, right? Or apparently not. It's because I like you. I'm not lying. Can small fists tremble? I mean, if they're going to be that outrageous, then they might as well just said the craziest possible thing that they could have. Like, can supple little hands tremble as he feels something in his dinosaur rocket ship tidy whities that he's never quite felt before? I mean, were they afraid that that'd be too creepy? Because it doesn't really get much creepier than what they actually put in the game. Uh, at least not legal anyway, without getting an adult rating. Things are getting serious with Ken. Seriously statutory. Once we go in, we're just friends. If we tell everybody about this, I'm sure everything will get weird. Gee, you think? Well, don't worry, because there's actually an option to keep it a secret that even Ken knows is the best choice. It's hard to imagine all this going down, even in this fictional world. Like, what on earth is going on here? I know the protagonists in Persona games always keep their relationships a complete secret for some reason, but surely going on dates with a 10-year-old is going to get around. I mean, the game doesn't outright show the diddling taking place, but even in this fictional world, surely she'd be arrested if the cops found out, right? Like, all right, you guys ready to go to Tartarus tonight and save the world? Hey, wait a minute, where's our leader and Ken? Uh, yeah, our leader got into a little bit of legal trouble over the weekend, so I don't think we're gonna see her for a while. And, uh, Ken's not allowed to hang out with us anymore since we're not allowed to get within 50 yards of him anymore. Hey, hey everybody, I'm back! Oh, by the way, I'm required by law to inform you that I'm a registered sex offender. Going back to the dialogue, though, Ken eventually gets a little bit insecure, as it'd be expected of a 10-year-old, but thankfully you could reassure him by, uh, holding hands with him. His small hands, of course. There's even a scene where Ken talks about how he wishes he was an adult so he could be with you, and the line that the game wants you to say to him for the most points is, You're fine the way you are. You're on your own in a few years, though, kid. Oh, God damn it! the game even tells you his lips tremble after you tell him he's fine the way he is. Monaco, Monaco, Monaco. What am I to do with you? Chris Hansen here of Hansen vs. Predators to catch a predator and have a seat with Chris Hansen. Now, Monaco, I'm going to need you to have a seat right over there. I've been going through some transcripts. I have some questions and some concerns. So my question is, why is a 17-year-old female like you dating a 10-year-old boy? You know who I'm talking about. Hmm? Ken Amata? It's the sort of behavior, Monaco, that could lead you to meet me in a dark kitchen someplace for an interrogation. Having to call one of your fans like Cameron to throw your bail? How's that going to work? Again, though, I'm really not trying to start any kind of a crusade by bringing this up, because like most Persona fans, I'm still going to play it even if the diddling's still there in the newest version, so it's not like I could pretend that I'm really angry about it, and if you're going to play it too, then you kind of have to admit that you're also not really that mad either. But at the same time, though, I can easily understand why people would skip the game entirely over this, so I really wonder if Atlas is actually going to go through with leaving it in there or take it out altogether. I know that talking about the Nintendo Switch and Xbox ports of Persona 3 Portable in the future tense is going to date this video, but the very instant I heard about the Ken romance, I just had to dive deeper in. When I saw how frigged it was, how could I not make a video about it right away? First, I thought it was kind of weird why I couldn't find anybody else who made a video on this already, but then again, I probably shouldn't even be touching this with a 40-foot pole, so if this is the end, then eh, it was fun while it lasted, I guess. But hell, I wonder if Atlas even remembers that this dialogue exists in this game that they kind of had just lying around on their shelf for over a decade. I mean, it's not exactly a remake, it's kind of just being copied and pasted from the PSP, so there's not really a whole lot of work to be done. Like, people have had all these years to make a big deal about this, and surprisingly, nobody ever has, so I kind of feel like the boat was missed on this issue, on the account of it slipping through the cracks over a decade ago. But even if people do get mad, would Atlas really put extra work in to remove the Ken romance when, at the end of the day, the game's probably going to sell about the same amount of copies either way? I mean, there's probably purists out there who wouldn't want anything taken out regardless of what it is, and I could totally understand that from a preservation aspect, like a Hulu and Peacock pussed out and took old content down that hasn't aged well, whereas Disney, of all companies, left all the old content untouched. It'll be it with a warning before you watch it. But uh, on the other hand, there's also people who don't want alleged diddling in their games under any circumstances, which is a pretty understandable stance to take as well. Hell, there's even a fan mod that won't let you diddle Ken. And look, I'm sure that no matter what I say, some people are going to make me a bad guy here, which is probably why nobody really wanted to make a video on this in the first place. Either I'm going to be labeled as a defender of the North American Marlon Brando lookalikes for admitting that I'll still buy the game if they leave the alleged diddling in it, or I'm going to be labeled as part of an outrage mob for understanding why Atlas would take it out. I mean, 99 times out of 100, I'd just say leave old content untouched no matter what end of story, but the Ken social link's pretty goddamn wild, even by 2009 standards, so... Yeah, I'm not gonna boycott the game if the port comes out unaltered, but I'm also not gonna boycott if the dialogue's changed or even cut out altogether. 
Personally, I don't really care what Atlas ends up doing, but at the time of this recording, my gut tells me that they'll release it as is, Polygon will get mad, it'll trend on Twitter with like 1 to 2,000 people for a few hours, and then it'll kind of just go away. But at the same time, nobody really cared about this issue for over a decade, so if I'm a bad guy for still wanting to play the game anyway, then so are the millions of Persona fans who have been praising P3P for all these years, so really, this isn't just on the developers, it's also on the fans as well. Sure, you might have complained and made some Reddit posts about it pretending to be mad, but at the end of the day, you did still keep playing, which is pretty much an admission that you weren't really that mad about it. But I mean, taking it out won't lead to any more sales, since the people mad enough to boycott the game probably wouldn't be Persona fans to begin with, so really, Atlas is damned if they do and damned if they don't when it comes to deciding on whether or not to change the content. If it were a full-on remake, then the choice would be pretty easy, but with a straight-up port, it kind of becomes a little bit of a conundrum. After all, the main benefit of porting a game is that you don't really have to do all that much actual work, so would it really be worth paying the voice actors to come in and record like five lines of dialogue to replace the old creepy ones just to please people who weren't going to buy the game in the first place? Plus, if Atlas changes this one creepy thing now, then what about the creepy thing in Persona 5? Are they going to have to patch the game to take the teacher romance out later on? I mean, again, that's definitely not an okay thing to do in the real world, and I'd never glorify a high school teacher dating one of their students, but... I don't know, I kinda think it's funny in Persona 5, so I don't want him to take it out even if it never happens in the series again going forward. But anyway, my channel's probably doomed after touching this topic, but if you got a kick out of my incoherent rambling and disturbing humor though, then you should check out this trilogy of videos I made where Atlas USA literally tells me to destroy a copy of Persona Q, but if you'll excuse me though, I gotta go take my ridiculously expensive and, quite frankly, sexy Korochan plush out for a walk, after a stop by the grocery store, of course. Later!